Today I've got so much stuff I need to talk about guys and this is very important. I'm going to tell you about three different things which may be bearish for the Bitcoin price in the short to the mid term. So that is obviously something you will need to know about. We're also looking at the charts. We're looking at everything that is Bitcoin and cryptocurrency related right now. The stuff you need to know about. If that sounds good to you then stick around because we start right now. All right, guys, welcome back. My name is Cristiano, bringing you cryptocurrency in videos without fluff, no noise, straight to the point. Hey, we are almost at 20,000 subscribers. I bet if everyone listening right now who have not yet subscribed, if you would push the subscribe button right now, we would immediately be pushed above 20,000 subscribers. So make sure to do that. But right now, let's get to the Bitcoin chart. So if I bring out my drawings, you can see that we actually tapped this liquidity zone again here on the daily. If we go to the one hour, we can see this more clearly. So as you can see, I am anticipating a pump once we reach this orange zone. So we reached it right here. We had a pump to the upside. We reached it again and then we had another pump to the upside and then we went down again and right now we're seeing these wicks. Now, are we going to now continue to the upside? I mean, 13,800, it's proven to be very, very significant resistance. Why? Because it is the last <laughs> line of defense for the bears pretty much. So yeah, if I had to make a bet, I would anticipate us breaking 13,800 in November because after the election, for granted, we have bullishness in the market in general when it comes to traditional stocks. We don't know who's going to win the election. Everyone are sitting on the edge of their seats right now. But from a Bitcoin perspective, what I am watching right now is that if Bitcoin actually on the four hour here goes down to 12,000, I mean, this is going to be a massive buying opportunity if it actually reaches this point. But I am not sure that we are actually going to be able to reach this point. If we go back to the one hour, there's another thing I need to show you guys. So if I bring out the 50 day moving average, you can see that this is very significant. If we go to the left here, you can see that we wicked up here during the 28th of October. Once again, during the 28th of October on the one hour chart here, and we have wicked here. This has supported us throughout, uh, well, um, yesterday pretty much. And we continue, we can see right here that we are resting on this line right here because we were resting on this green candle and then we formed this uh, pump right here off this actual moving average. So keep your eyes on the 50 day moving average guys. Another thing we need to consider here on the one hour while we are here is that we are forming a bit of a structure here when it comes to to uh, to uh, the, uh, on the on the one hour. We can draw a line right here because this is just overall forming a structure in the market and then we can draw it from here. So something like this, which means that we are about to reach an apex within the next two days. So the next two days, guys, are going to be very important for Bitcoin on the one hour chart right here. Of course, if we try to bring out a target, we can do some measurements and we can just take the overall structure of this right here. And then we uh, put this on our uh, breakout target. If we assume that we are going to have a breakout right here, that would actually push us to 14,400, which is, uh, you know, pushing us above the massive $13,800 resistance. So yeah, at, at the very least expect something happening right here. But on the breakdown, that actually takes us down to 12,000 500 ish which is this target right here so i would assume us to have a bounce of of this um level if we actually break down from this so yeah be mindful of that guys but of course everyone are sitting on the edge of their seats right now waiting for the u.s election what is going to happen i mean there's three days and 16 hours left and on traditional markets, you can see that we have actually been in a very significant downtrend all the way from the 12th of October here on the daily. This is the futures. But yeah, we have gone down by what is this? I mean, 8%, oh yeah, almost 8% here in the traditional markets, the S&P 500. So are we coiling up? Are we just waiting for a catalyst to have a break up or break down? I think that is the case. And that is also evident on the DXY. As you can see here, the US dollar has actually been very strong during this uh, whole pandemic. I mean, with the amount of money printing going on right now, you would assume 
that the dollar would lose even more value. But yeah, 10%. Of course, my thesis is that a lot of the money printed has actually not entered the market right now. That, that is why you're seeing relative strength in the US dollar right now. But look at the inflation. The inflation is not that bad right now, but the M2 money growth is massive. So to what this signals to me is that a lot of money is sitting on the sidelines waiting to be deployed. So that is what we are waiting for guys. We're waiting for the election. We're waiting for all of this to have its resolution and then the market is going to pick a direction. I thought this was interesting. So Bitcoin is just four days away from historically bullish 10,000 price record and of course this is the consecutive days above 10,000. It has never happened that we have had 100 days let alone we are at the record right now. I think the previous record was in 2017. It was like, I don't know, 70 days or something. But right now we are about to have 100 days straight over 10,000. Now I want to bring out this because this is pretty interesting. When we had 100 days above $10, it only took us 122 days to reach $100. When we had 100 days above $100, it only took us two days to reach a thousand dollars and when we had a hundred days above a thousand dollars it only took us 150 days to reach 10,000 so we are creeping up upon a hundred days right now above 10,000 how long is it going to take us to reach a hundred thousand dollars well if this is an indication perhaps you know 122 perhaps 175 days i don't know uh let me know down in the comment section what do you think is the most accurate amount of days before we reach a hundred thousand dollars because to me it is inevitable and while we are talking about bearish things we need to talk about this thing with iran because yeah the central bank of iran are actually hoarding bitcoin right now and using it to avoid sanctions and this is bullish and it is bearish as well because I'm going to explain why I think that this could potentially be a bearish catalyst for the Bitcoin price in the short to the midterm. So what they say is Iran has become the first country in the world to use cryptocurrencies at a state level of value exchange. The Iranian cabinet has amended legislation to redirect cryptos into the central bank of Iran's funding mechanisms for imports according to a Saturday report by the official IRNA news agency. So where are they going to get the Bitcoin from? Well, they say here, the miners are supposed to supply the original cryptocurrency directly in within the authorized limit to the channels introduced by the CBI, said the report by CBI and the Ministry of Energy. So why is this potentially bearish? Well, they are under heavy, heavy sanctions by the West. Okay, the US are, you know, sanctioning Iran. And if they are able to circumvent that by using Bitcoin, what is that going to mean? All of a sudden, you know, all of these uh, authorities, all the governments, and if you don't obey to US law, then you are pretty much wrecked. I mean, no matter what you do, if you are a business and you're accepting US customers, yeah, you, you can count your days pretty much. And for them to openly just use Bitcoin to circumvent all of the sanctions, that is probably not going to be well in the eyes of the US. So the country is in a grip of US sanctions. So they cannot use dollars for international trade. They are therefore turning to Bitcoin, the first country to do so at the state level. With the famous Bitcoin volatility less of a consideration here because the situation is desperate. And mind you also, back in the day, I mean in 2019, they were really, really not keen on cryptocurrency. I mean, Iran. They were, you know, they had, I think that they even banned the use of cryptocurrency and mining at some point. But now when it is in their favor, all of a sudden, you know, they are changing that and you're able to, to actually use cryptocurrency as far as I'm concerned. Another thing we need to talk about is what's going on with Binance right now. So there was a report leaked allegedly from Binance, but, you know, CZ has gone out and said that no, it was not from Binance. But what they said in that uh, leaked document is, uh, well, let's read some of the quotes. Binance Holdings Limited, the world's largest cryptocurrency exchange, conceived of an elaborate corporate structure designed to intentionally deceive regulators and surreptitiously profit from crypto investors in the United States. Another quote is, while the then unnamed entity set up operations in the United States to distract regulators with fiend interest in compliance, Measures would be put in place to move revenue in the form of licensing fees and more to the parent company, Binance. All the while, potential customers would be caught, taught how to evade 
geographical restrictions while technological workarounds were put in place. So yeah, I would urge you to read this article in full if you want to know more about all of these uh, allegations. But CC came out and said that he is basically always complied with all of the regulation according to where he has actually set up the company. We do not acknowledge the alleged document. Binance, together with our local partners' actions of getting registered, licensed, and regulated in multiple jurisdictions, prove our commitment in doing things right. But yes, you're seeing more and more regulatory scrutiny. This is what I have predicted. You're going to see even more of this. We already have a BitMEX, we have Tel, we have Bitfinex. All of these things, I mean, things are changing in the crypto space, guys. Moving on, a new Huawei smartphone will feature a hardware wallet for the digital yuan. Now, I wish that they would actually also support cryptocurrency like real blockchains, kind of like what Samsung have been doing with their phones. And hey, if you're a Samsung user, is this true? I mean, are you able to use the Samsung phone? Have they all actually developed their own cryptocurrency wallet have you been using it let me know down in the comment section i wanted to talk about ripple i wanted to talk about moneygram but time is running out on this video so i guess we will save this for the next video if you would like me to cover that let me know down in the comment section but until then let's talk about four altcoins i think are going to do well granted we have to take for granted that the uh, altcoin market is going to do well as well here in the uh, in in the medium term at least perhaps short term you're going to see continued sell off in the altcoin markets but for altcoins you need to keep your eyes on let's jump into it popping up in the middle of this video right now and i will see you right there